Hello, and welcome to episode five of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And today we're going to be talking all about our trip to the Western New York Veg Fest. Um, we went to Veg Fest in Buffalo at Buffalo Riverworks on September 26th. Yeah, right? That is correct. Yeah. And uh, we had a really good time. Yes, we did. Yes, really we did. good time. Um, we're pretty new to the the Veg Fest scene. We've only actually been to two, both of them at Buffalo River Works. The first was the Taste of Vegan back at the end of July, and that was actually a fundraiser for Buffalo Veg Fest. And then, of course, Buffalo Veg Fest on the twenty sixth of September. But one of the things that I already notice about being at a veg fest something that i really enjoy about it is that you are completely surrounded by similarly minded people or at least right. people who are curious about moving towards a plant-based lifestyle if not going completely vegan in one fell swoop then at least seeing oh okay maybe there are some options maybe there are some ways that i can cut certain animal products out of my out of my life yeah, it was kind of like, ooh, my people. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. It's, yeah. I it, was saying, and Sam thought it was funny that I said it was kind of like back in the day when you when you went to a gay bar <laughs> as a gay person, and you're like, oh, everybody here is probably gay, <laughs> except they're vegan. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's there's a similar feel that that can't be argued, and the, yeah, I do think that's funny. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess it's a. Um, a place where you don't have to feel judged for not e eating animals or using animal products. Absolutely. Yeah, because you know that at least the majority of the people there are heading in the same direction. Right. If not there already. Right. So it's just really cool. I seriously appreciate that. The other thing that I love about the Western New York Veg Fest is that it does go to support uh, all of the proceeds from the Veg Fest, meaning entrance fees and all of that good stuff, yeah. goes to support a really great organization, which is Penelope's Place Sanctuary, which right. is a farmed animal sanctuary uh, not far outside of Buffalo. We haven't had a chance to go there yet, but they are definitely on our list. And once we finally do get around to that, um, we'll definitely let you know more about them. Yeah. So um, there were tons of vendors. Um some selling food, some selling products. Uh, there was also people representing various um, animal sanctuaries and some people selling like uh, wellness products, which I thought was interesting. Uh, there were people selling the mushroom, the mushroom complex stuff, and we didn't get around to their booth, which I was a little disappointed. My main um, thing that I told the veg best people is next year, can we make it two days? Because we were full like halfway through the day and couldn't eat any more food. And yeah. I was a little disappointed by that. Yeah, that was, um, that was kind of problematic. I mean, with Taste of Vegan, when we went, because your ticket price gets you the food that is being offered, you're just getting bites from each vendor. You're not right. getting full on sandwiches or meals right. or anything like that. But with the Buffalo Veg Fest, it's different. You pay an entry fee, but then you also purchase the food that you want to try. Right. And so the point of a Veg Fest, I think, in a lot of ways is to taste as much food as you possibly can. Right. Especially if there are things that are not regularly available to you or are not um, something that you can find in your immediate communities. So um, that was our, our mission going in, was to eat as much food as we possibly could. Like we kind of fasted the day before yeah, we did. to make sure we were as hungry as possible. Yeah, we kind of saved ourselves. Yeah, we did. And it didn't really serve us because we still got stuff to the point that we, we couldn't try everything. And we were so hungry when we got there. Yeah. It's like, get me food, get right. me food. And um, I think the first thing that we headed to um, was... We started with India Gate. Yeah, we went to India Gate and got, um, we got uh, samosas mm -hmm. and we got... Um, it was a tofu, a doll. tofu no. matar. Tofu matar, mm -hmm. which was so good. And we were smart enough to just split it. We, yes. We didn't each get our own serving of it. You know, they gave you two 
uh, samosas and a, a really hearty serving mm-hmm. of the of the matar tofu the, yeah, um, it over good. rice. It yeah. was so good. It was so good. And we kind of scarfed that down. We did. <laughs> we scarfed that down pretty quick. I think both because we were super, super hungry. Yeah. And of course, because Indian food is one of my favorite cuisines. And so anytime I get to have Indian, I'm just very, very happy. Yeah. Um, and their food is really good. And their food is really good. We actually uh, had some of their chana masala at Taste of Vegan back in July. And that was wonderful as well. So. Yeah. We'll definitely be making a trip to India Gate to investigate more of their vegan options. At yeah, some absolutely. Point in the future, absolutely. Yeah, so that was our first stop, and um, the the reason it was our first stop is because we were so so hungry. We actually meant to start at Buffalo Plant Burger, right? But the line was so huge, right? That we're like, okay, no, we're just too hungry to wait for, you know, 45 minutes to get Buffalo Plant Burger. Yeah, because their food is notoriously fantastic. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. And we did get to taste um, their stuff at Taste of Vegan as well. And it was amazing. Yeah, and everything. So we, we were really looking forward to to that. But um, we decided to head to India Gate because we just, <clears throat> sorry. For those of you who are wondering, my voice is a little bit out of whack. Um, I had a surgery last weekend and was intubated, so my voice is not quite yeah. where it should be. So I apologize if I'm a little raspy yeah. today. She's fine. It was an appendectomy. Just an appendectomy, yeah. no biggie. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. And that's something we're going to talk about at some time in the future is being vegan in the hospital. Yeah, that's definitely something we can do an entire episode on. Easily. Hospital food. Yep, for sure. Anyway, getting back to the point of this episode. Um, So after we went to India Gate and had some lovely food from them, um, our next stop was to see the vegan zombie. And this was one of Christine's uh, favorite tables. Yeah, I, I tried not to fangirl out because I've been watching his videos for a couple of years now, but it was nice to finally meet Chris. And um, I really wanted to buy this one T-shirt that he was printing. It has kind of a Ouija uh, design on it, and it's just a fantastic design. Um, and I, w- I wanted to make sure I, I grabbed one before he was out of them. So that was our second stop, definitely, that was. to see Chris at the vegan zombie table. Yes. And so we wound up with two of those Ouija board shirts because, yeah, they are just really cool. They're awesome. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Uh, and right next to the, the vegan zombie were the lovely folks from the Mockingbird Farm uh, Sanctuary. And um, we spent quite some time chatting with them. What? What's going on? Chirpus, our cat Chirpus, is trying to get into the closet. You may hear him in the background pounding on the door. (laughs) Chirpy, no. (laughs) He thinks his name is Chirpy, no. Yeah, (laughs) pretty much. Chirpy, please stop it. Thank you. Do you want me to banish him? No, he's fine. Okay. So anyway. So yes, we spent uh, spent a good deal of time talking to John L. and John. Um, yep. from the Mockingbird Farm Sanctuary. Yeah, they were very sweet people. Very sweet people. Oh my gosh, so nice. And they had wonderful pictures of so many of the animals that they have rescued and that they are working with. And uh, they were doing a campaign to buy a particular design of t-shirt that would help fund medical care for yeah. some of their new residents. Right. And uh, it was just really, really, really great. Yeah, they had like a a pre-sale yeah. for a t-shirt that they have coming out. Yeah. yeah. So we were we got a couple of those t-shirts mm-hmm. from them and got some information from them cuz we would like to go and visit their their farm too. They're not, they're, not, they're not doing like um scheduled tours or anything, I don't no. believe, uh, public tours right now, mm-hmm. but um they did say that they might be able to accommodate a tour for us sometime in the future. So that would be really great. Yeah, that would be really cool. So we'll set that up as soon as we possibly can. Yep. All right. Then after the uh, Mockingbird Farm, Christine's question was, okay, so what do we eat next? Right. And Christine was really, really, really excited about... It was future foods. Future foods. Which um, I was really excited about. I am, I am, I feel a little guilty because they're not a local vendor. Mm -hmm. They're not a local food provider. They are national and they travel from 
VegFest to VegFest, city to city, um, selling their, vending their food, you know, from a, from a tent. Right. But, but Chris- their food <laughs> looked so fantastic in all, because they kept sending out ads for every VegFest that they were at. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to try this so bad. They do like a fried chicken sandwich <laughs> in different uh, varieties, like um, they barbecue and buffalo and ranch and they're, and they're huge. <laughs> so that was our second second uh, food choice, and uh, the line was really long for them. The line was super, super long. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure we were in line for that for about 45 minutes, yeah, to I think be so. honest. And, yeah. But we decided that that was worth it because that was like the thing that you wanted to try while we were there. It was definitely one of the things I wanted to make sure that I tried. Yeah. Because I knew we probably wouldn't have another opportunity yeah. to try them. Right. And so, um, fortunately, we ended up having a lovely conversation with a group of people behind us yeah. um, who were, it was three vegans and an omnivore. And a, you know, yeah, they had an omnivore. I don't know if it's their sister or somebody that came with them. And it was funny. She got in line. She's like, what are we in line for? <laughs> <laughs> she had no idea what she was even in line for. Not a clue. And That's... then we discovered that she was um, not vegan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, d- I do think that she said she was Almost vegetarian, whatever that means. I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that she had significantly limited her intake of meat and was yeah. eating mostly vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, seeds. Yeah, but and that she was struggling. She her struggle was how would she live without cheese? Which was she was standing behind the perfect person because I am like the cheese monger. It's true. <laughs> I'm like I know. I thought the same thing when I went vegan. I thought there's no way. I'm ever going to be able to live without dairy cheese. Well, guess what? You can because there's really good cheese out there. There really is good cheese out there. Um, so, you know, all of us, the three uh, vegans who were with the one omnivore and the two of us, um, basically spent that time explaining to the omnivore that, hey, this is really a whole lot easier than you think it's going to be, you know, right. and kind of kept nudging her in, right. in that direction. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was pretty fun. And so fortunately, you know, she was she was a, a, a good sport and she didn't seem to feel like we were ganging up on her or no. anything like that. It was, yeah, no. it was just it, all in good fun. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. it was all good-hearted nudging. Yes, good-hearted yeah. nudging. Yeah. Yes. And so uh, we finally get to the front of the line at Future Foods. Right. And immediately the young man who was serving as a cashier, um, I asked him how things were going. And he's like, busy. He's like, you want to come work with us for a while? <laughs> I'm like, they what? were working their butts off. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, it pays fifteen bucks an hour plus tips. Yeah. And it I was, was just the two of them. The yeah. b- the boy out front taking people's orders and ringing people out, and then one other guy was, was doing the all chef. the cooking. Yeah. And so I was halfway tempted because I was like, hmm, fifteen bucks an hour plus tips. That sounds okay. <laughs> plus all the that. food you can eat. Right. Plus free food. Yeah. He, he did said tell all us the plus food you can eat. <laughs> I was like, you know, that doesn't sound half bad. It does not. So yeah, I considered it, but decided not to and you know instead we just gave him a nice tip instead yeah i'm glad you didn't like abandon me and go (laughs) go off to travel with the future food people no i wouldn't have been traveling just that day oh just that day just that day okay yeah um so anyway we decided to get the barbecue it was like a barbecue deluxe yeah chicken it was sandwich and it had barbecue sauce and like fried onions and pickles and oh there were so many things on this sandwich that i can't remember are you looking it up i'm looking it up you're looking it up okay yeah we got the um deluxe barbecue chicken it's chick sandwich (laughs) uh it's got their crispy chicken patty uh lettuce ranch sweet uh sweet barbecue sauce bacon bits seasoned crispy onions and pickles that's what go. was on it. There and, we go. And it was huge. And it was huge. Yeah. And we just shared one, right? We did. Okay. Which was probably a good idea. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I don't think we would have finished either of, like, if we had gotten two, we wouldn't have finished them. Yeah. There's and we didn't no bother way. with getting a side of fries or anything no. like that because we're just, that's just wasted calories at yeah. a veg fest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You want, you want the, the, you know, the, the central part of the meals. You don't yeah. want to waste your calories on potatoes. Yeah. Um, no matter how good the potatoes are. And these chicken sandwiches were $16. Yes. $16. Right. So that's quite a bit. 
That's that's quite a bit yeah. for a, a chicken sandwich. No, um, but I mean, I think it's a really profitable venture for them, you know? I would think so. And there was so many people willing to pay it. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Because, come on, people. Uh, vegans are willing to pay for their food. We really are. Often. Yeah. But, I mean, I do think the price was a little high, to be oh, honest. It was for, definitely For high. what it was. And yeah. it was a huge sandwich, and it was inventive and I loved that there was so much stuff on it and the texture of the chicken patty was really pretty good. Oh, it was delicious. Yeah, um, it was crispy. Yeah, it was nice and crispy on Lots the outside. Lots on the outside. Tender on the inside. Yeah. Um, I didn't find that the the chicken patty itself had much flavor. No, no it was pretty neutrally flavored. It was very neutral. Yeah. Um, but also I found the entire sandwich completely overpowered by the barbecue sauce. The barbecue sauce. did kind of take over. Yeah. Yeah. Like I couldn't taste the ranch. I couldn't really taste the onions. I certainly didn't taste bacon bits, which for those of you who are wondering, bacon bits are vegan. Yeah, they're they vegan. They are not animal based. We don't know what they're made out of. <laughs> <laughs> but they are made out of some vegetable substance. Some sort of yeah, chemical and vegetable yeah. Thing. Yeah. Bacon yeah. bits are vegan. Yeah. So yeah, if figure. I had to do it over again, I would probably have gotten like maybe the classic and maybe ask them to put some ranch on it or something. Yeah, maybe. That... Because I think even the buffalo probably would have overpowered everything. Mm -hmm. And oh, they, they had another one, mango habanero. Oh, see, that sounds good. Yeah. But it's dipped in mango habanero sauce. <laughs> Right, so, so that, that all again, this, I think the sauces are what really make these sandwiches. Yeah, and they have a really neutral chicken substitute mm -hmm. thing, and then all the stuff they put on it makes it fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I mean texturally, it's great, and I'm pretty sure it's tofu based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is too. Yeah. So it was. It was a. It was a really interesting sandwich. It was not as spectacular as I had hoped it was going to be from I all of it was the really pictures good. that Christine was showing me. Yeah. But um, you know. But it was. It was I enjoyed it. Well, I'm glad that we she, ate it all. Yeah, we certainly did. We didn't leave any of it. That's no, for sure. And not. while we were standing, because we had to wander around um, to find a place that they had like these little standing bar tables. Which they needed more of, I think. Yes, definitely. But we found one that wasn't occupied. And um, while we're standing there eating this sandwich, I don't know, maybe five or six people said, where did you get that? <laughs> yeah, this is true. What, what is that you're eating and where did you get it? Right. Yeah. Right. So. Absolutely. So after the uh, Future Foods chicken sandwich, we decided we needed to take a break from eating. But our main objective was to uh, go to see Stephanie Jenko's Oh, yeah. I wanted to make sure I checked that because they did have people, presenters. They had people um, doing recipes. Uh, they had food presentations like cooking demos and other people doing presenters. There was also like people doing yoga and, and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. But we didn't involve ourselves in that because we were there to eat. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't if um, if you're not familiar with Stephanie Janko, she has a um, a page, a podcast, and a blog. Uh, it's called Be Well with Steph. I'm almost positive that's what it's called. I'm gonna verify that just so I don't steer you in the wrong direction. Um, but she's a really great person, and uh, she does like like um, she like counsels people on how to uh, live well. You know, eat well, live well. Uh, you know how to how to. She does motivational stuff. It's be yeah, it's be well with Steph. Yeah, be well with Steph. And you can find her on Instagram and she like I said, she has a blog and a podcast. And her podcast is really, really helpful. She gives some really helpful information. So I wanted to check out her presentation. And she had this really cool thing where you could scan um one of those codes. What do they call those codes? QR codes. Q, yeah, you could scan a QR code and it would pull up her presentation, the slides on your phone, which was really great. And my phone died right right after I scanned the QR code. So I couldn't really follow along on her slides. But you didn't really need the slides no. to follow along. Oh, no, absolutely yeah. not. Her presentation was very clear. Yeah, and I thought her presentation, yeah, she did really well. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was informative and entertaining. Indeed. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, so then after we did, well, after we watched Stephanie's presentation, where did we go after that? Uh, then I think we went to Avenue Twenty Nine Foods. Oh, right, yeah, because they were pretty near where the 
presenters they were area was. right next to the presenters area yeah. and so we're looking at what they're offering and they're offering vegan hot dogs and they're offering impossible burgers yeah. and they're offering quinoa bowls yeah. and spring rolls and all of that kind of stuff and we looked at each other and we're like we're just too full to have another <laughs> we burger or hot dog yeah. or so like we can't do it right. so we did get an order of the spring rolls yeah we weren't terribly impressed. No, they were not very good. They were not very good. <laughs> well, I think the problem was is that they were making them ahead of time. Right. And they were getting, you know, a little cold. And a spring roll is something like, or well, anything fried. Sure. You want it like right when it's made. So, yeah, that that for me was not particularly successful. It was a little cold because it was cold and fried. It yeah. was a little greasy. It, it felt yeah. a little heavy. It wasn't so good. No, it wasn't so no. good. So um, for me, if I were to do this particular veg fest over again, I probably would have eschewed the future foods sandwich in favor of an Avenue 29 quinoa bowl. Right. Because I really wanted to try their quinoa bowl. Yeah. And we were that just... sounded good. Yeah. And we were just too full to do it. Yeah. So lesson learned... Next time I will I will head in that direction. Yeah, well there's so much there's so many things you want to try. I know. You know, you can't get to them all. That's why it really does need to be two days. It really does. You know. Yeah. It would be really great if it was two days. It'd be awesome if it was two days. Mm-hmm. And so after our spring roll experiment, we went back to the presenter station for what was probably the most entertaining half hour of the entire veg fest. Which was a oh, it was uh, lentil ca- sloppy Joe cooking demo with Capuchin Filson. Oh, Capuchin is oh amazing. my god! First of all, she gave us all she gave us all free sloppy joes. She did, <laughs> which were delicious. Yes, but also made it impossible for us to eat anything else for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> Thanks, Capuchin. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. They were good. Yeah, they yeah. really were. And she made them like right there on right site. Right there in front of us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um she um she was just talking about, you know, how is how easy it is mm-hmm. to make simple things like a sloppy joe or, you know, things that aren't really easy to veganize. Mm-hmm. And but she is just so darn entertaining. Yeah. I mean, she had us all laughing and Absolutely. Yeah. But not only that, I mean, I thought it was really, uh, I thought her story was really powerful. Yeah. She did start her presentation with letting us know that she had spent a lot of her earlier life very sick yeah. in different ways and that she had had, you know, three different major surgeries and um, that it took her that long and then some to realize that the way that she was eating and what she was putting into her body was a big part of why she was sick. And right. so she finally made the transition to being vegan and she's been healthy and vibrant and no problems whatsoever yeah. ever since. So I, I found that to be really inspirational. She also, uh, I thought her presentation was great because it combined, you know, her real life story with a lot of wit and humor and just unbelievable enthusiasm oh, like yeah. i could have listened to her talk all day <laughs> she has great energy great energy yeah. and also getting in there you know some of the um animal liberation and collective liberation ideas that right. are at the foundation of veganism and right but without being preachy yeah and i think that's really important and the audience responded really really well to her and so i just thought she was fantastic yeah i think that was probably the best part of Veg fest for me. She was really entertaining. I I enjoyed her a lot, and I enjoyed her her energy and her spirit. Yeah, yeah. And she also has a website. Yes. Um, I don't know if she has a website. She. Let's see. I let Christine do all of the social media stuff because I'm really not a social media fan. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, Capuchin. On if you want to find her on Instagram, she's Honey Hued Vegan. So Honey H O N E Y, Hued H U E D Vegan V E G A N. So you, that's where you can find her. Um, she says I'm a vegan soul, uh, Kitua sister in this cruel harsh world. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So if if you want to check her out, she's she's 
she's really fun. And like yes. I said, her just her energy is just infectious. Yeah, completely yeah. infectious. Yep. Just absolutely so we enjoyed her presentation yeah. and her sloppy joes. <laughs> and her sloppy joes. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And she she made sure she came around. She said, you know, here you go. Take some and you better let me know if you dig it. So yeah, let me she- know if you dig it. <laughs> and so, of course, you know, after her presentation, we're like, Capuchin, we dig it. We dig it. We definitely dig it. Yep, we did dig it. Yes. And the sloppy joes were wonderful. They were a, a wonderful tomatoey lentil blend. Yeah, I mean, they, they were, tasted like sloppy joes. They, they were yeah, delicious. They were fantastic. <laughs> yeah. They were fantastic. But that really put the end to the amount of food that we could consume. It was sad. It was sad. Yes. Yeah. So we didn't get around to any of the vegan bakeries, which was really unfortunate. Yeah. But also probably a good thing because I am a sucker for baked goods. Yeah, we probably would have filled our bag with tons and tons of cookies and of, baked goods. Yeah, we probably would have. Yeah. So our apologies to all of the vegan bakeries that we didn't get that to. we did not get to. Yeah. <laughs> um we're so very sorry. Yeah. We we will make it up to you at some point. Yeah. In some way. Oh, definitely. I don't know how yet, but we, we will, will. We will get your products some other way, believe me. Absolutely, without yeah. question. Um, oh, we did, uh, what we didn't mention was, I think that actually the first food that we procured was not something that we ate right away, but it was the Happies. The, happies. They, they make oh. these flavored hummuses. Hummai. Happies. Hummai, yes. We, yeah, flavored hummai. And our favorite is, um, she calls it India. And mm-hmm. it's, of course, like Indian. It's got Indian spices. And it is so, so good. You can good. really literally eat it out of the container with a spoon. No problem. Yeah, yep. it's amazing stuff. We discovered it again at Taste of Vegan back in July. Yep. And we're so excited that uh, she was going to be at VegFest as well. Yep. And that was my main thing. When we were thinking about, okay, so what do we really want to make sure we do at VegFest? Christine was like, I got to try that future food sandwich. And I'm like, right. I have to buy Happy's Hummus. Happy's. <laughs> and you can, buy, you can buy her products online. Yes. Yeah, it's Happy's, H-A-P-P-E-A-S. Is it H-A-P-P-E-A-S? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so she has a website where you can buy her products. So yeah, that's cool. So you can get her stuff Online and through through the mail, I believe. Yep. Or um, you can find her um, at various vegan events or in and around Buffalo. She, I, she's often at the farmers markets mm-hmm. and, and all that. So yeah, definitely check her stuff out because it's delicious. Totally. Yeah. Yep. And so our final stops were um, one. We did make another stop back at uh, Mockingbird Farm. Yeah, because to chat I, with them again. I think it was somehow, like, I got you a t-shirt, and you're like, well, I have to get you a t-shirt. Oh, that's what? right. Because... And I'm like, she's like, well, where would you like a t-shirt from? And I'm like, let's go back to Mockingbird Farms and get one of their t-shirts. Because we pre-ordered, a t- right. each, I pre-ordered e- us each a t-shirt right. um, of a design that they have yet to release. But they did also have their their original right. t-shirts and i love the design on them you know with the um chicken yeah. and it says mockingbird farms mm-hmm. um so i said let's go back to mockingbird farms and get t-shirts yes so we went back and got a second t-shirt each at mockingbird farms yeah and then we made what was a second stop we didn't mention our first stop um but our second stop at burning books oh right yeah burning books which is a bookseller and he has some oh. really great titles my God, yeah, the titles that he had out for for sale were just amazing. I could have spent we could have spent hundreds of dollars there hundreds we really of could dollars have. yeah but i bought I bought a couple of pins. I bought um a book for my brother in law because he when in his youth was a he man fan, and he had this little book that was uh, Skeletor's Guide to Quarantine. Oh my god! You <laughs> do was... realize that you're giving away a stocking stuffer I right am. now. I don't think Owen's listening. Owen, if you're listening, please um, forget that by by the time Christmas rolls around. <laughs> but uh, and then why? Oh, I got a game. I got a little game for our niece Lucy, but I won't say what it is, just in case she happens to hear this. Okay. There yeah, you go. and then you, went, we went back. Went back. Yeah, um, because one in the time that we had been at Burning Books, I was completely unable to decide what books I wanted because there were so many books that I wanted to yeah. read. They had a lot of really great. I titles. was just so excited. I mean, and not just about veganism, but a lot of other socio political issues. Um, it was just fantastic. The the range 
of stuff that they had. Right. Um, yeah. Obviously very well thought out. I mean, every, yeah. you could tell that every, every book that this guy carried, and I think it was a husband and wife team. I think so. But yeah. you could tell every book that they carried meant something to them. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? yes. Yeah. They were very thoughtful selections. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I did wind up getting a few books right before we left. Um, because originally when we were looking, I was like, yes, I will definitely be spending some time and some money here, but I don't want to carry books around all day. So right, <laughs> we'll do that last. And so I think Burning Books was, in fact, our last stop of the day. Uh, oh, was it? I think so. Hmm. Well, let's see. Where can you find Burning Books? I think their website is burningbooks.com. Burningbooks.com. And they do have a brick and mortar uh, in Buffalo. They're at 420 Connecticut Street in Buffalo if you wanted to check them out. And awesome. definitely check them out. Definitely check them out. Yeah, because yes. you have to support the small bookstore for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> we can't have, you know, Amazon eat up everything. Not everything. No. No. Yeah, so that that was the last place we stopped, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Because then, we were full yes, and we, out, out of money at that we point. We sadly decided <laughs> that we could neither eat more or spend, spend more. more. <laughs> So yeah. away we went. Yeah. So we bid adieu after, I think we were there for like four hours. Oh yeah. Easily. Yeah. And I really wanted to stay, um, Chris from the vegan zombie did a food demonstration, food demo. Yeah. He uh, did a tofu scramble. Yeah, where he was doing a tofu scramble demo and I kind of wanted to stay for that, but it was, we would have had to have hung around there for another few hours and, um. Uh, we didn't want to spend any more money or eat any more food. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Again, the, this is why it needs to be two days. Why it needs to be two days. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And it, it just makes me think how much trouble we're going to be in next Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Next Saturday, I am so, so, so excited for this. Oh, wait. Hold it. Hold on there. Why am I holding it, on? Because it's it's just a little bit of a teaser. But we also stopped and saw um, Gabby at the vegan... Uh, oh, grocery gosh, store. Of course, yes, we did. And she was uh, like I said, we we didn't want any more food, um, and didn't want to spend any more money. But she gave us a free lollipop. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we got a free lollipop, free pineapple lollipop. Yeah, and I, Gabby we did. Wa- we did just want to check out her her booth and yeah. and say hello to yes. the good people at the vegan grocery store. Yeah, and you know, we told her that we were just too full to buy anything that day, but we did go up to the vegan grocery store a few days later. It was actually just the following Friday. Right. um, And did a little shopping. We did. And we'll be back uh, again before holiday season because we want to pick up some holiday, like a holiday roast and a couple Mm -hmm. other things that we can't find here. And we'd rather give her our money than uh, Topps Market or Wegmans or any of those places. Absolutely. We'll be definitely, Gabby, if you're listening, we'll be back out to see you. Very soon. Look for us soon. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So on to and your so teaser. And so on to the teaser. Yes. Okay. So we will be attending the largest veg, veg fest that we have gone to up to this point. Yeah. Um, and that is the Vegandale Toronto Veg Fest. Yeah. So very excited for just a couple of reasons. Number one, that we can actually go to Toronto, yeah. which we have not been able to do for Almost two years. Right. We weren't allowed to cross the border. We weren't allowed to cross the border. So it's super exciting that we get to go back to Toronto. It's one of our favorite cities. Yeah. They have um, hundreds of vegan restaurants there. Yeah. I I think the official count is 164. Right. So we go um, to another country just to eat vegan food. That's right. Absolutely. (laughs) We will travel to another country. Yes. Just so we can go to vegan restaurants. Well, we'll travel to another country for any reason, really. (laughs) But yeah, in this case, it's frequently just to eat vegan vegan food. So yeah, but um, the Vegandale Festival in Toronto, um, if you're familiar with the Vegandale people, they put on veg fests um, all over the world. Actually, yeah. they have one in Chicago, they have one in LA. Um, and now this one's in Toronto. And, New York was recently uh, New York City, right? New mm-hmm. York City, New York City was recently. Yep. Yeah. And um, they are having to tighten up their COVID-19 restrictions mm-hmm. a little bit because Canada has uh, kind of kind of clamp down on the COVID-19 restrictions. You do need to have proof of a um, vaccination. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure they'll be uh, requesting that people wear masks. So, And that actually kind of makes me feel a little more secure. Oh, absolutely. I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very glad about that, yeah. actually. And also there is, uh, you actually have to pre-register your vaccination 
um, before you get to the border. There's yeah. a, an app. Yeah, the, yeah, not because of Vegan Dale, but Canada. Canada, right. Yeah, Canada, the country wants, it will not allow us over if you don't have proof of vaccination and a negative COVID-19 test mm-hmm. within the last 72 hours before you can even cross the border. So, right. So we'll be going to get tested tomorrow. Yeah. 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 And Pray then, for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite sure neither of us have COVID. We, we should be all right. We should be just yeah. fine. Um, but so we're super excited, uh, not only because we get to go to Toronto, which we absolutely love, but we get to go to the Vegan Dale Veg Fest. But my concern now is, oh my God, how are we ever going to get through an entire day of and vegan food? of vegan food and not be completely stuffed. Like, yeah, we're, we're going to have to have a plan of attack. Yeah. It, well, it's, it's a bigger location, so there'll be more walking. We can, that's per, good. Perhaps we can walk more of our meals off and maybe that's good. Try and space our food out a little longer yeah. and, you know, maybe go to a food vendor and then maybe some other kind of vendor, like an art vendor or sure. a product vendor and then walk around a little yeah. and maybe get, you know, like yeah. an iced tea or something <laughs> and then you know not like scarf down every like no we cannot yeah. scarf and the lines will probably be longer so there'll be definitely a oh, longer that's true too yeah there'll be a longer wait for food I yeah believe, more so. people equals longer lines yeah that's i know true. chris from the vegan zombie uh went to vegan dale new york mm-hmm. and the whole time he was there he only managed to eat some macaroni and cheese and I believe a slice of pizza <laughs> because the lines were, <laughs> were so, so long. long for everything that um, unless you had, you know, all the time in the world and apparently right. he had to get back, um, they just didn't have time mm-hmm. to try anything else because the lines were so long. Right. I don't think I'm, I don't know. I don't know that uh, the Toronto Vegan Dale Fest will be as crowded as mm-hmm. the New York City Festival. He, I think he said there was something like 30,000 people there. That's, I, yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think the COVID restrictions will probably, um, keep that a little lower too. Possibly. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited about it. And we'll definitely be having an episode about our visit to the Vegan Dale Festival. So, um, stay tuned for that. That's right. That'll be our next episode. Yep. Will be the Vegan Dale Veg Fest. It will be. In Toronto. Yeah. So is there anything else you wanted to say about the Western New York Veg Fest, which I think was a fantastic event. It was. And and kudos to uh, the committee of people that put that event together. All your hard work was definitely worth, it paid off. Absolutely. It was definitely worth it. Absolutely. And I also want to give just a little bit of a shout out to all of the sponsors of the Veg Fest. Not all of the Veg Fest sponsors um, were able to be there that day. Right. Um, but they are really wonderful organizations. So one was the Vegan Grocery Store. And of course, they were there that day. Um, but they are a sponsor of Veg Fest. So go Gabby and team. Then we have Barney's Ice Cream. Uh, which is not a fully vegan entity, but they do offer uh, nut milk ice creams for those. Dairy-free ice cream. Dairy-free ice creams for those of us who do not consume dairy milk. Right. Then we have the Almaza Grill, which is a Lebanese uh, restaurant, uh, just a bit, I think they're in Tonawanda. Yeah, I think you might be right. They're in Tonawanda. We've never been there, so. No, we haven't been there, but we did taste their food at... Uh, taste of vegan and their falafel was fantastic. Yeah, that's right. It was really good. So we definitely want to make sure to check them out in the very ne- near future. Yeah. Um, one entity that we have been dying to try, this one restaurant that we just can't seem to get to, is Big Mood. Oh, Big Mood. Yeah. Big well, they had, they had closed for a while. <laughs> right. Um, I think because of staffing issues. They are back. Uh, they are back up and running and open. So I'm looking forward. Definitely looking forward to giving them a visit soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. For Wanna sure. Eat their food and get the big mood. Get the big mood. And then one place that we have been and we were very, very impressed with was the Wurlitzer Pizza Company. Absolutely fantastic pizza. Yeah. Like, they're also a sponsor of uh, Are Veg also Fest. a sponsor of VegFest. Yeah. Their pizza is really good. If you want to know more about Wurlitzer Pizza, we have a review of our trip to Wurlitzer Pizza from a few weeks ago uh-huh. on our blog, and that's on our website, www.compassionandcucumbers.com. That's yeah. spelled out, A-N-D. Um, and then finally, as a sponsor, we have Flourish Cafe. 
Right. And Flourish Cafe is what they do is they make pre-made meals and they make like a, a week's worth of different pre-made meals. You pre, pre-order and then you pick up, I believe their pickup day is like Thursday, Thursday and Fridays. So every, every Monday they put out a menu of what the meals are and then you can call in and order what you want and then you can not cook for an entire week. Wow. They, they, they do all the work for you and it's, it's all plant-based food. And uh, I think they're they're spectacular. I'd like to check out their food sometime too. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm all for that. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. So yes, so thank you to all of the sponsors of the Veg Fest. Thank you to all of the vendors at the Veg Fest. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who came out to support the Veg Fest. Yeah, we had a really good time. Yeah, we had a fantastic time. Already looking forward to next year. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, it- we would like to sponsor for it to be two days. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Get in touch with us. So Veg and, Fest. And, ask us <laughs> and, and let us know what would we need to do to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I agree with that. So yes, to Veg Fest, if, if you hear this and you would like to make the Veg Fest a two-day affair, right. let us know what would need to happen. I'm sure that we can get not only ourselves, but some of these other vegan sponsors yeah uh to band together and make that happen so we can all taste all the foods yeah we got to taste all the foods all the foods okay so do you think we've said all we needed to say about the western new york veg veg fest should we wrap this up or i think we have yes all right well thanks for listening you've just frittered away another hour uh (laughs) listening to christine and sam of compassion and cucumbers hasn't really been an hour i mean 45 minutes um but uh thanks again for listening and uh reach out to us uh email us if you have uh comments about the VegFest, if you were there uh, and you want to tell us what your experience it was, email us at compassionandcucumbers at gmail.com. It's compassion spelled out A-N-D, cucumbers at gmail.com. Check out our website at www.compassionandcucumbers.com and uh, make sure that you like and subscribe. Uh, follow us on our Instagram and our Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a review. Yeah, if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review and rate us because that really helps us, uh, our place in the algorithm. You know, we're all living by the algorithm these days. So um, I guess uh, that's what we'll leave you with. Thank you so much for listening, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.